Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice radio, so today... I'm going to be showing you a new Manectric card. Yes, there were very few cards released in the couple weeks before my daughter was born. Since she's been born, it is a constant deluge of new cards. So cheers for that. It's not like I've got anything else I need to be doing. This Manectric, ladies and gentlemen, is really good. And it has jumped quite high up the list of cards I need to talk about. Now, it has been revealed and translated by the lovely Rappelman TCG. Though I should mention that Autobot Tesla has been used as a a bit of a check for the translation for this particular card. So first things first, it is a lightning Pokemon that means you're hitting weakness against Ho-Oh, which is all well and good. And if Empoleon ever becomes good like I think it should be, then good news, you'll be hitting that for weakness as well. Although that is starting to look unlikely. Sorry, Empoleon. It is weak to fighting, which is a bit of a pain at the moment because, you know, Buzzwall's running around. Buzzwall is a little bit of a pain. And 160 HP, it is quite low for stage 1s. I mean, Tapu Koko's a lightning basic with 110 HP. The bad news here really does revolve around Buzzwall. Buzzwall will be able to take this out. Now, in the short term, you've got strong energy. And in the long term and short term, you've got Diancy Prism Star. Good news is, after Strong Energy rotates, if Boswell just has a Diancy Prism Star, and remember that Fighting Fury Bout is also rotating, then that means with Weakness, Boswell will be hitting 100, which will not quite be enough to KO Manectric. So at least after Worlds, after September the 1st, when the rotation hits, you should be able to have this up for one turn in front of Boswell before it gets KO'd. Unless your opponent goes and drops a beast energy, in which case, sorry, we tried. Great news is, it's got a resistance to metal, and with stuff like Registeel seeing a bit of play, that's quite nice. But in even better news, it's got Free Retreat. And I just, I cannot tell you how useful Free Retreat is. We've seen Pokemon recently, like Mew from Fates Collide and like Tapu Koko, that have seen a lot of play because they've got Free Retreat. And it's so useful. Being able to pop a Pokemon in the active and then retreat it. Or being able to play a Guzma knowing that you've got a Free Retreater on the field that you can put up active when you play a Guzma and then just retreat. And remember that Floatstone is rotating. When Floatstone rotates, having a Pokemon with Free Retreat is going to become even more important. Good news, ladies and gentlemen. Good news. But none of that is a reason why it's jumped up into the start here. Why we're doing this video quite so quickly. The reason is, it's got a great attack and a great ability. And according to David, the ability says, if you go second, you can play this card face down during setup. Now, I wanted to check the translation of this. So I went over to Autobot Tesla. And he's got it translated as, the player who goes second may place this on the field in their first turn. Now... Translation here is going to be absolutely crucial. But the translation that both David and Autobot Tesla have got would suggest that you can play it only if you go second, not if you go first. You can play it on the bench or in the active. And of course, it's got free retreat. So being able to put it in the active so that you can retreat to whatever you want turn one is huge. Although, to be honest, you'll probably want this turn one. But what I'm really looking for in the translation here is, can you play multiple of these down? And with the translation we've got, if you go second, you can play this card face down during setup. Yes, you can put multiple down. Now, it's not that you can draw any cards, so you've basically got the seven cards you get during your startup phase when you're drawing your opening hand, and any mulligans you get. That's where your opponent starts with zero basic Pokemon in hand, so you, they get a new hand and you get an extra card. That is all the time you've got to draw them. But of course, most of you at this stage are probably thinking of Talonflame, which had a similar, though not the same, ability. The thing is, Talonflame's ability said very clearly, you may play it as your active Pokemon, which meant you couldn't play it on the bench. It had free retreat you'd never want to, but you couldn't. But crucially, it meant that if you started with two or three Talonflame in your opening hand, you could only play one of them down. As it stands with Manectric at the moment, if this translation holds, and we're going to have to wait till it's officially revealed in English 
to know. But if this translation holds, you are going to be able to put as many of these as you've got in your hand down in order to begin the game. That's actually really, really big. Because you can have multiple of these down. It means you don't have to evolve up through Electrike. And remember, that will be weak to Boswell as well. So that really will be vulnerable. Now... There are a couple of awkward things here. First of all, this is only if you go second, whereas Talonflame was first or second. So it means you're going to really want to choose to go second, even if you win the coin flip. But the downside of that is, what if you go second and you don't start Manectric? Because remember the rule, ladies and gentlemen. First, you flip a coin to the side. Then you draw your opening hand. So you are deciding to go first or second without seeing your opening hand. You've got a just under 50% chance of having a Manectric in your opening hand. So there is a fairly good chance that you're going to choose to go second here, not have it in your opening hand. That kind of sucks. But having a free retreat with 110 HP as a Pokemon at the start on your field, pretty gosh darned good. The other thing, and this will be exactly like with Talonflame, it's not a basic Pokemon. So if you start with an opening hand that has no basic Pokemon, but it does have a Manectric, then you can choose to not play the Manectric and take a Mulligan instead. That is up to you. Talonflame saw a lot of play because of this ability. Then again, Talonflame had a really good attack. Good news is I like Manectrics more than I like Talonflame. If you've got two basic energy cards in hand, you may attach them to one of your Pokemon. Oh, and it does 40 damage. First of all, 40 damage for one energy is pretty gosh darn good. I mean, add a choice band and against a Ho-Oh here, you're doing 140. That is really not too bad for a single basic energy on what is essentially a basic Pokemon on your first turn. But you can attach two extra energy to your field. Now, there are a couple of Pokemon that really come to mind here. We've got Tapu Koko. Love the GX attack on Tapu Koko. Not really the main one. But you can attach the Pokemon to anyone and then use Tapu Koko's ability when you play it to move them on to him. Don't forget we've got Raichu GX that does more damage depending on how much lightning energy you've got in play. Up till now, we've been using Pachirisu. I like this probably a bit more than I like Pachirisu, so that's really good for Raichu decks. And then you've got weird stuff like Alolan Golem here. Alolan Golem's too expensive. As it stands, though, this could actually really help. Now, the translation here does say you attach both the energy to one of your bench Pokemon. So that's obviously going to open up Guzma shenanigans. Your opponent is going to want to drag that Pokemon in the active and KO it, basically going, ha ha ha, you put all that energy on a Pokemon, I've KO'd it. Which is why it's better if you attach them to something like a Tapu Koko than attaching it to something like an Alolan Golem. Because Alolan Golem really is not, or I suppose it will be an Alolan Geodude, it just doesn't have much HP. It's going to go down pretty quickly. 70 HP, weakness to fighting, bit of a pain. But that's okay. This is a great, great setup attack. And I'm sorry if I'm saying this for every card we look at lately, but Rayquaza GX. Rayquaza GX does 30 damage for each grass and lightning basic Pokemon you've got attached to all of your Pokemon. Now, when I talk about Rayquaza, I talk in glowing terms, and I've said we've got lots of options. In the meantime, not for long, but we've got Max Elixir, we've got Rayquaza's ability, we've got Vikavolt, etc, etc. I'm also a big fan of B-String, although you have to play some Ultra Beasts here. Well, you got this as well. And in a Rayquaza deck, why would you not play this to get some extra energy on the field? The thing is, this is obviously going to be compared to Talonflame. Similar ability, but you can put multiples of these down, but you've got to go second. As for the attack, I prefer attaching two extra energy. Because the thing is, right, with Talonflame, your opponent was just going to drop an end. Like, every time if they can, you can search for any two cards. They are going to end you out of that hand. You still get a new hand of six, but they're going to end their way the cards you searched for. Here, you attach the energy, and then by that point, it's too late. Now, firstly, you've got to have the energy in hand, else you're not going to be able to use it. Bit of a pain. And secondly here, there is every chance your opponent is going to play a Guzma, and if your opponent plays a Guzma, you're going to lose that energy. Although, like I've said, one thing you can do to get around this is put it onto a big Pokemon, 
so that you're not going to be quite so vulnerable to N. Either way, I think this is a phenomenal card, and I absolutely love it. I'm giving it four Wassies. And it's not because I think it's a bad card. It's because you've got to go second. And then maybe you don't have any in your hand, so you've chosen to go second for nothing. And then maybe you don't have energy in your hand to attach. Or maybe you do attach the energy and your opponent plays a Guzma. The ability and the attack for this Manectric are both phenomenal. But there's so much that can go wrong, so I'm knocking it down to a 4 Wassy card. Maybe you agree with me, maybe you disagree with me. Great news, comment section, go nuts, be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all of that, head on over to patreon.com slash ptcgradio where you can do just that. And do make sure you check out my video game slash Dragon Ball Super channel, Wassy Plays, for some more Wassy action. But by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.